something every day. I'm not for sure why someone is unmuted. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today in our wire string art class. And yeah, we're making a bunny for Easter time. Um, in case you guys haven't. No. Or not to my name is Yvette Ricard. I am the marketing coordinator with Beetle On and Artistic Wire. I'm usually behind the scenes for our jewelry making classes uh, with Michaels online. And you're used to seeing Meredith Roddy, who is in the chat room wearing the bunny ears um, in support of the bunny theme that we have going on today. So she'll be answering all the questions. If you have any comments or questions or inquiries in the chat, she'll answer them for, for you. Um, if not, then she can just interrupt me at any time and, and ask me. This class is being recorded and it will be available on the Michaels class, uh, website and on YouTube channel in 24 to 48 hours. Um, so a little bit about Beetalon. Beetalon is a jewelry wire manufacturer. If you're familiar with uh, our products in Michaels, going down the beading and jewelry section of the store, you'll see all of our wires and tools and findings. and um, our products are primarily used for jewelry making and stringing beads and gemstones. Um, however, you can also use our products for other crafts, and this is one of them. So string art, I'm sure you're familiar with, is uh, an old craft that's, what, decades, 70s, it was really popular in the 70s. Um, I've never done it before until I did it with wire. So when you think of wire, you're thinking of the beetle on wire, which is very thread-like, it's soft, you use it to string beads, or you're thinking like a hard wire. So artistic wire is actually a copper wire and it comes in many colors and sizes. And these are just like a plethora and you can actually see all right here behind me, all those are the majority of the colors that we actually make. And they come in so many colors. The gauges range anywhere from 10 gauge up to 36 gauge, um, and again, in a variety of colors. So it's all copper wire, it's, it's soft tempered, which means it's very malleable and it holds its shape. And they have a color coating enamel, so it doesn't tarnish and it doesn't come off. And the gauge itself is kind of tricky when you're talking about gauges for wire. The higher the number, the thinner the wire is. So 26 and 28 gauge, like the one that we're gonna be using in the class today is very thin. And if you the lower the number, like 18, 16 gauge, the thicker the wire is. So keep that in mind when you're choosing wire for wire wrapping, if you're familiar with jewelry making and wire wrapping beadstones, um, the thicker the wire, the lower the number, and the thinner the wire, the higher the number. Okay, so let me go over the materials that we're gonna be doing for our class today. And if you saw the picture, and obviously you did since you signed up for this class, thank you. We're making this cute wire string art, isn't it? So cute. I know I can hear Meredith in my head. She's saying, so cute. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is so easy to do and so fun. And let's just get to it, should we? So what you're gonna need for the class. Let me go over my overcam. There we go. Okay. So here's our tray of goodies, right? So you're gonna need your, okay. I know this looks like a lot. Let me, let me go through this first. You're gonna need your nails, right? You get these at any hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, anywhere. You can use, I think in the instructions, I put three quarter of an inch, but anywhere from three quarter of an inch to at one inch, which it says right here is, is pretty good. Um, in order to read the packaging, this is the gauge. Again, I explained the gauge. This is 17 gauge and that's the length, okay? So the difference between these are wire nails and wire brads, meaning the wire nails actually have a head on it, okay? The wire brads are, have a slimmer profile, so they don't have a head. You can use either one. Um, for this, I, I don't think I have enough for the project. I typically use wire nails, but I'm gonna be using wire brads for this project, but you can use any one, okay? You're gonna need your hammer. Ooh, so cute. You're gonna get your wooden surface. And these are the wooden surfaces from Walnut Hollow. I love these because they're already pre-cut, they're sanded, there's no knots, it's a soft wood. 
you want, if you're using, if you're going to be doing any string art where you're hammering in, you want to use a soft wood, obviously, because the nails and the hammering makes it a lot easier versus a harder wood like oak. Um, and you don't want anything with knots in it, obviously. So Walnut Hello makes these great wooden surfaces um, in many sizes, and we're going to be using the six by eight inch. Okay. You're going to also need some wire. This is the creme de la creme artistic wire, 26 gauge. And this is the tarnish resistant silver color. Okay. We're also going to use scrapbook paper. And you can use any kind of paper that you want. This is like the turquoise wood panel. This is the pink, what's shiny. And but today we're going to be using the, the pink wooden one, the pink wooden scrapbook paper. And that's a good thing about Michaels is whatever fancies you, you just pick up your paper and you can use a background. So no painting required. You're going to get some Mod Podge, okay? Bone brush, wire cutter tool. So you're going to need this to cut the wire, it has an angled cutter. You don't want to use scissors. And I think this is a great tool to have on hand. You can use your fingers to hold the nails, but this is a just a, a chain nose plier that has a serrated jaw in it. So it holds the wire, uh, the nails in place. Okay, so this is this is a good hack if you're gonna be doing wire uh, string art. It holds the nails and you don't crush your fingers in the process. Um, you can find these in the embellishment section. These are paper flowers, different pastel colors. I love these. I thought these were the perfect accent color. And optional, a bead mat or a towel, and you use that as a surface for the vibration of the nails when you're hammering them in. Okay. So the first step in the project is you're going to use the template that are in the instructions. And I think Meredith has already shared the template and instructions. And I have done a lot of the hard work for you. I created the template with the dots. So all you have to do is just place the nail in the dots of the template and you're all set. There's no thinking of, of where the nails go, the placement, how far apart they should be. Um, this is the most simplistic way to do this project because half the work is already done for you. You're going to cut your scrapbook paper and you're going to use Mod Podge and you're going to glue it to your wooden surface, which I already did here. Now I've already went ahead and started hammering, but you're going to place your template on the wooden surface. Okay. And you're going to start hammering exactly where the dots are. Now, if you didn't have a template and you were going to do this on your own with, let's say you wanted to do like an Easter egg or any shape you want, just, you know, Google search clip art or coloring pages um, on the internet, all you have to do is basically just find a shape or an outline and place a marker or a pencil dot on where you want the nail heads to go. That's another time saver. I mean, obviously this is a template that I did in the software program, but if you want to do this at home with another design, that's just the easy way to do it. Just cut it out, print it, and then put marker uh, points on where you want the nails head to go. Now, where you want the placement of the nails, that's really your um, preference. For this particular design, I put them fairly close because I want the wire to overlap and show more. If you space them out more further away, you're going to have more of the background wooden surface showing through. Um, and it also depends on the material. If um, I'm actually using 26 gauge, but if you were to use 24 gauge or 22 gauge, which is a thicker wire, it's going to cover up more of the surface. So you may not need as many nails, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's get our nails out. Like I said, I already pre, I did the one bunny ear just to save us some time. Move this here so it's easier to access. Dump my nails out. Now what I like to do, again, pliers and you hold the nail in place where the marking is, like that. And so actually the pliers are flush against the surface and it holds the nail upright. You don't need to worry if, you're, if your nails are not going in straight, if they're crooked, that's fine. Trust me, it's, it's a very dedicated process to get them straight and even I can do it. So don't worry about it because at the end, it's not even gonna show. So again, just follow the nails along all the dots 
and and then we'll go on the next step okay so bear with me with the hammering time this is the the therapeutic like i said before in my in my classes um this is my little stress release moment <laughs> so i'm gonna hammer away and i'll try to do this fairly fairly fast so you get the gist of it um but this is really for me this was this was the fun part when i first discovered uh string art in general i it happened during quarantine and and if you've taken my class before if you've seen it on the youtube channel this this craft like many of you i'm sure have explored when you had downtime or spare time or were stuck at home during quarantine time i, I found a hobby this was my hobby many people gravitated to what cooking and watching Netflix and exercising. And for me, my inner crafty girl came out. She was suppressed for a few years. And obviously having old twins at the time, I didn't have any time, but this for me was my therapy. I think any time we're forced to sit still and take a moment for ourselves, being hands-on and creative is, is somewhat is healthy for yourself, um, which is I'm sure many of you realize because you're all Michael's customers and you are all crafty in a sense or learning something new or want to do something different. So for me, when I saw string art, again, I've never done it before, I've never done it in like camps or class, um, but I saw this this pro, um, craft on Etsy. There was a designer on there. She used wire instead of the, the thread. And immediately I was drawn to that. I was like, well, that's smart. Who would have thought of using wire? And lo and behold, I contacted her and, and I convinced her to make a piece for us uh, to display in our trade show booth in Tucson early last year. And it got so much attention of how creative and different it looked because of the shiny wire. So this particular project is done with the silver wire. Um, but when we're done, I'll show you some other projects that I made with the colored wire that is just, for me, anything shiny and sparkly obviously grabs my attention. So it was immediately, match made in heaven when I realized that I could use wire for this project. Of course, if you're not using wire, that's fine. You can use thread, but this is kind of what makes it different and unique that for many people haven't seen and probably you since you're taking this class and you learn how to make it. And if you're anything like me, quarant uh, doing quarantine crafting as I call it, you probably have had an accumulation of all your crafts now sitting around your house because of all the things that you've made. I, for me, have now every room in my house decorated with some sort of wooden sign, string art, um, and gifting them to people. They've been birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, anniversary gifts. Just because for me, it, it's just been so much fun to make it and I'm running out of space to keep them all, to be honest. So this is definitely a fun craft to do also for your home or to give it, a, give it as, a, as a gift. Because who doesn't like something handmade, right? Again, the template that I created um, makes this so much easier than if it was if you were starting it from scratch. If you want more projects, we actually have more templates on our website, uh, beetleon.com. And there's also previous classes that I've done for Michaels on their YouTube channel. Just type in wire string art. And they all have the directions and template already done to make your life easier.
So don't mind me and the hammering. I don't know if you could see, but I'm not really tapping it in too deep. You really don't need them to go all the way. And they're all different heights, and I'll show you in just a second when I'm done. Um, they're kind of all different heights, but you're just going to go back in once I'm done filling in the holes and then kind of just tap them all at the same time to make them a little bit even. I wouldn't suggest getting any nails that are longer than one inch because again, you don't want them, you're not gonna be tapping them in in the wood too much. And the one inch nail, anything longer than a one inch nail is gonna stick out um, really high. And unless you really fill the gaps in, it's gonna look really bare in my opinion. However, and this is a disclaimer that I'm going completely against what I'm, what I just told you. If you want to do a, a, a design that has different dimension, um, let's say a house, and you want the tree to pop, for example, there's a tree in the front. You want the tree to be higher because obviously you need different dimensions. So anything higher is going to be closer to you, and it's going to give you that 3D effect if that makes sense. Uh, if you don't have the pliers, you can use your, your hands, obviously, to hold the nails in place. Just please be very careful. I had one or two ouchy moments and a few uh, not so nice words blurted out loud when I hurt myself with the hammer. And, it, and this is also fun. Oh, I ran out of nails. Look at that. Okay. One second. Let me just grab. You know what, it's fine. I'll just open this one. Just need three more nails. Oh, you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even notice I used the different nails. Look at that. So the first year I did the wire brads. See, they have really small profile in the nails. And then the second year I did the wire nails with the head. I completely did that by accident, but it's a good thing that I did it. So that way it shows you the different profiles. So let's just pretend I did that on purpose to show you the, the differences, okay? In actuality, it, you can't really tell now that I put them side, side by side. The only reason why I recommend the wire nails if you're starting off, because obviously it's a little bit easier to hammer because it has a flatter surface. You see, here it is the wire brad versus the wire nail. Not much of a difference, but what I feel that the wire nail is easier because when you're wrapping the wire, because it is wire, it slides on the nail and then the nail head actually holds it in place a little bit better versus the wire brads don't have much of a, a stopper and it can slip off a little bit. But we're not gonna, we're not gonna experience that too much because we're not gonna be wrapping a lot of it, but the wire nails for sure. If you're just starting off, I recommend that. Okay, so once everything's nailed in, you're gonna gently tear off your paper template. Hey, Yvette, we have a really good question while you're doing that yes. um, from the group. And I didn't know, I don't know the answer to it. So can you speak to how thick the board should be that you are hammering the nails into? Does it matter how thick it is? It does not matter actually, because like I mentioned earlier, you're not nailing in the, the nails too far deep in. Um, if you're, let me rephrase this bass uh the walnut hollow wooden surfaces 
and the art mines that they also have at Michael's are the best ones to use. I don't recommend the surfaces that have the, like the whitewash paneling that kind of look like pallet wood, only because that's a different kind of wood. I'm not sure what kind of wood, it's kind of like an MDF. And those have a tendency to split um, and they're a lot thinner. So they're not as, as thick as the, the walnut hollow surface boards are. They're really thin. So they have a tendency to split and they also have knots in it. So I don't recommend those those surfaces that are meant for vinyl signs or just painting. I recommend the, the wood panels that are used for, they're called, this is actually called a basswood. And I believe this is like about an inch uh, thickness. Um, and they're all usually this thick at the store. All right, so we have our, our nails in place, right? Everybody happy here? You can start seeing that outline. We're going to take our wire. Here we go. Now, just on any of the wire heads, the wire nails, just wrap your wire around. And this is where the fun and the magic happens, though, so they say. You don't need, there's no rhyme or reason or um, algorithm on how to do this. You just wrap as your heart is content. I usually like to just go back and forth and weave horizontally and then go back vertically. Um, this is a fairly easy design, so it kind of dictates where to wrap, to be quite honest. But there's other designs where you just don't know where to start and you, it's really how you want to do it. I just want to make sure that you start with every nail back and forth. And see, this is where I told you the wire brads don't have that nail head. The wire tends to slip off a little bit easier, but I just use my finger to make sure it holds in place and it's not gonna go anywhere once you keep wrapping it back and forth. Oops. Okay, so we got to the bottom. Now I'm going to weave on the way back. Go in the opposite direction. And just, all you have to do is just turn the board so it's easier for you to, to access rather than you doing some kind of weird twister yoga moves. Just move the board so it's easier for you to wrap. Okay, so we got our bunny ear here. So you can go back and forth as many times as you want to fill the space in. Um, for the purpose of this class, I'm just gonna go in twice, back and forth. 
Um, I'm gonna wrap it around with a wire cutter here. You're gonna cut the wire and it stays in place. No knotting, no gluing, nothing else is needed besides just a simple wire wrap around the nail. So we're gonna do that again for this second ear. Now keep in mind the way that this image is done, you wanna fill this, actually you wanna fill in, let me show you the example here. Fill in this part first and then this part. So that way it looks like it's layered and coming over on top. And that's where you wanna keep in mind of which sections you do first because the last section is gonna be the one that's closest to you. And that's how you're gonna to wanna to give the dimension. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to do this first, this part first, the underneath part. So again, wrap it around the nail head. Now this one's gonna be a little bit easier because I did use the wire uh, nails with the heads. So it definitely makes it a lot easier to wrap. And if you notice they get stuck here on the, the spool, there's a little slit here and that's what holds the wire end in place so it doesn't unravel. So as I'm doing this, I'm holding the spool in my hand and just threading it through as I go. That way, if you let it go, the spool will just, the wire will just come all undone and it does get a little bit messy. So I kind of just work from the spool and just do it that way. That way it's, it's a lot easier to, to manage. Not have to worry about wire unraveling. Okay, got that part, cut that end off. Now we're gonna do this section right here. Wrap that end around and go to town. I also do recommend, if you haven't done this before, um, I recommend the hammer that I showed you. I know Michaels has it online um, versus a normal carpenter hammer that you get at a, at, a, at a hardware store because for some reason, the ones at the stores, they are really big and bulky and are obviously not always intended for smaller hands. Um, I raided my husband's garage when I first started this and it was just too cumbersome. So these hammers that you can find at Michael's are definitely worth the investment if you're gonna be doing this because it's a lot easier to handle. Um, this nail is a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna hammer it. I'm to get it a tap and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, we're gonna go back and weave it around again. Oh, there we go. So this way. And there's no rhyme or reason on which nail to go. There we go. I'm only doing it once, actually just twice, up and down, just for the sake of the class so you get the gist of it. I'm gonna wrap the wire around the head and trim it off. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you get any of those tails out of the way. The next part I'm gonna show you is how to outline 
the image. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your wire, wrap it around the end again, a few times, doesn't go anywhere. And this way, and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna create an outline all around the shape by weaving back and forth in between the nail heads. I don't know if you could see that here. All I'm doing is just going back and forth. Once you get to the end, you just wrap it around and then start the other side, back and forth. Okay, wrap it around. Okay, you see that? See how I weaved it? Now I'm gonna go up the same process in the opposite way. So it forms an X in between every nail. Okay, we got that set, section done. And then don't forget to do the inside as well. Same process, back and forth. Wrap it around. When you get towards the end, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then back up. Okay, so it gives it more definition and you start to see the image better once you start outlining. Okay, oh, but we're not done yet, folks. What you're gonna do now is go around the whole perimeter with the wire. So you can either just go like this, and since this shape is fairly straight, you can either just go around, wrap it around like this, at the top, and all the way down, or you can, if you want to be meticulous about it, you can wrap around each nail head back and forth like that. I'm gonna do that on the inside as well. Wrap it around a few times, skip a few nails, wrap it around, skip a few nails, wrap it around. You start seeing the, the process, right? Skip a few nails. Okay, now we're gonna do the inside of the nails. So the same process as the outside, we're gonna go along inside, wrap around, take it around one a few of the nails, skip a few, wrap it around, skip a few, wrap around, skip a few. Okay, you start seeing that right there. Now we're gonna do the inside of this side, the funny ear. OK, 
Okay, trim it off. Now your first year is done. You see the difference between the outline version and this one that's not? Okay, let's do that process one more time on this side. Weaving back and forth. And remember I told you, if your nails are not in straight, that's okay. It's not gonna show because the wire is gonna hide it. And the beauty about using the silver wire is that it blends in with the nails. However, if you wanted to use different colored wire um, and you're using nails, one trick is to if you want the nails to blend in a little bit better is you get a Sharpie or one of those acrylic pens and just color the tops of the nail heads and it blends in with the, with the wire perfectly. Now we're going to do the outline. Let's start with the inside ones first. Doesn't matter if you do inside or outside first. Remember, you don't have to do every nail head, but you can if you want to. Just have to skip a few. And then we do the opposite. Okay, now we're working on the outside. And the beauty about using the wire when you don't use, if you're not wrapping over each nail like I did here, you see this one right here, you just push it in and it holds and it stays in place. Okay, I think we're done, folks. Wrap the nail around or wire around the nail head. Take your cutter. Make sure you cut the, the wire from the spool, not the one that's already wrapped. And then when you're done here, you just tuck the wire into that little slit in the spool and it stays in place. Okay, 
So we have our bunny ears. There you go. Now, if you wanted to embellish it even more, you have to just use these fun paper. These are actually paper, which you can't even tell. They look like they're like a, a normal flowers from the floral section. But these are cute because some of them have the little rhinestones and some don't. So what you're gonna do is you take your Mod Podge. You can use any one you want. If you wanted to use a hot glue gun, you can do that too. I'm just gonna pour some in the cap. You take a foam brush or regular brush. And then you're gonna just coat the inside. With the Mod Podge. And then you could just take any flowers, place them however you'd like. I'm doing some big ones first and filling them in with the smaller ones. If you feel like you want to do it one by one, you can certainly do that too if you want to start layering them. This one, and some more. Pink one down here. And instead of flowers, you could also fill it up with beads if you wanted to. Add even more sparkle or just all rhinestones. It's another idea. Some flat back crystals. Make it really sparkly and just push them down. Let's do one more here. Okay, how easy, right? Now, if you're doing this with kids, I recommend you obviously do the hammering part. Anything gluing like this is a fun part that the kids can get involved with. Let's get some of the bigger ones out here. Yellow. Need more color. Is everybody else super excited that spring is finally here? We're our factories outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we're finally seeing warmer temperatures. Hopefully, we won't be cursed by any snow, but you never know because sometimes that happens. And the least expect it, you get all excited, it's warm, and then boom, a snowstorm comes. How about one more green one. Get one right here. Okay, hey guys, that's it. Now, if you have a Cricut machine or a silhouette machine, or you can get vinyl stickers or letters at the store, then you can just put in, I did this for, with this one I did, there we go, Happy Easter with the vinyl. You could put any saying here, you could say welcome friends or happy spring, whatever floats your boat. See, so easy, right guys? Told you, and you did that, we did that at what, less than an hour. So let me show you some other examples. So if you wanna, Felicia, take me to the overhead cam. Okay, so if you want more bunny inspiration with the scrap of paper, I did, this is the oval shape that I found a few years ago. 
And this has scrapbook paper with Mod Podge, hanging with my peeps. Get it, peeps, marshmallow peeps, hanging with my peeps. <laughs> I see you laughing, Meredith. Anyway, so the cute part about this is I actually attached rhinestones, flatbacks, to the nail heads to make it see the eyes and the little nose. Cute, right? Super easy. And this one, I did a dirty pour. And again, it's the oval wooden surface as the beveled edge. I thought it looked like a, an egg, so that's why I gravitated to the shape. But it's a dirty pour technique with different colors. The bunny silhouette. This actually, I think, is our white wire. So it's not as shiny. It's a little bit of more of a matte wire. And I made a pom-pom with yarn. And this is a, one of those variegated uh, yarns that had the multicolor on it, which made it fun because it matched perfectly with the, with the, the, the paint selection. That's it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. How are we doing, Meredith? We're doing great. The only thing that we would love to see is a side view. Side view, of course. Yeah, everyone's always curious about how far down the wire goes or how do you push it down? How does, how does that work? See, there you go. Now you can see when you're looking at it from the angle, but not all the, the uh, nails are straight. But when you're looking at it from this way, everything looks perfect. So you don't have to hammer in that much at all. And that's it. Thank you all for joining me today. Again, my name is Yvette Ricard. Um, if you want more design inspiration, go on our website, beadalon.com, under the Resource Center, I believe, under Trends. Um, I don't remember exactly how Meredith named it, but she- I posted the link a couple of times. It's under Perfect. the Learning Center, Collections and Trends, and Wire String Art. Or if you just search Wire String Art in the search box, all of the designs that you did will come up. Good. Thank you so much. Um, if you do make uh, make something like this, I would love to see it. Please tag us at Beatalon, hashtag Beatalon, make it with Beatalon, make it with Michaels. Um, I also have a plethora of other designs that I've done over in quarantine time at Wires Cross Designs on Instagram. So if you want to get more design inspiration, feel free to check me out. Um, again, my name is Yvette Ricard, and I appreciate you taking my class. Thank you. Have a good holiday.